two. Hi, folks. You are watching and listening to another edition of Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels and networks and platforms. I'm Mike Morales in Southern California. That guy out there is Bryce Taylor in Austin, Texas. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Bryce, he is the Austin Tequila Connoisseurs. If you're not following him on Instagram and uh, Facebook and all those other things, then uh, you better you better you better stop what you're doing now and go follow him because this guy this guy has a palate that if nobody's business. Anyway, um, I I'm kind of excited and and I'm gonna I'm gonna show this. This is what we're doing today. We're going to be tasting and dissecting El Último Agave. This, this tequila has been a mainstay. Uh, and you'll notice that I have a little bit of it missing and there's a reason for it, okay? First of all, this is a rebrand, um, but the tequila has been around forever. When I lived here, I, I told Bryce off camera, I will, I will confess why there's some of it missing. When I lived here nine years previous, before I moved to Texas, um, there were days that I needed to buy tequila, you know, and and so El Último Agave was, you could buy it locally here in Southern California. It was dirt cheap. And I used to get the 1.75s, which came in the same style bottle, only much bigger with, with the same, uh, a different type of cap. It was uh, more rounded and blue. Um, and it was great. I mean, it was a bargain. I could I could get a 1.75 for like 24 bucks, you know, oh, which was dirt yeah. cheap. And and it was really good. Nobody, everybody bypassed it for all the pretty bottles. And I, this is this one in Cabrito would be the, the mainstays and great pricing, you know, old school tequila, not very expensive, good on the pocketbook. And so when I, when these were delivered to me, um, I thought I better taste it because it might have been, you know, it might have changed. And I can tell you, it's it's still it's still good, oh, uh, nice. but, but it's completely different. And I took pictures. I have a, a an old 1.75 that I use as a flower arrangement of my big flower pot, you know, for the outdoor patio stuff. It's great. It's great for holding flowers. So I took a picture of it because I, I pretty soon you're not going to be able to see the old labels. And um, so anyway, and it still has David Partida's signature on it. Uh, so it is coming from um, the distillery is known, uh, was it 1422? Is that what it says? Uh, 1522. 1522, sorry. Yeah. Don't have my readers on. There we go, 1522. So a lot of great tequilas come out of there. We're going to taste the juice. We've never had, we, we've never had done the review. And it's no. been around at least 10 years. It's this tequila has been everybody's seen this tequila and as a matter of fact i can tell you right now i tried to get this tequila uh at total wine in texas delivered to uh uh to araceli who is our our latest um uh catadora uh graduate and it was sold out you can't wow. get it anywhere in texas it's not available so hmm. didn't have it uh total wine didn't have it so it's like unobtainable I, I don't know why huh. but anyway we're gonna pour it uh um we're gonna taste it together i did not uh, confess to <laughs> to not confess to bryce that i that i actually had some but it was research folks it was research because i'm like that Ooh, nice bubbles nice lingering bubbles have you ever had this one bryce i have i have not no I'm excited to try it because I've, I've had a couple from the distillery there, but not this one. It's um, like I say, in Southern California, it's been around for at least 10 years. It's been here forever and nobody pays attention to it. I don't know why. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. You first. Go ahead. A lot of agave, but there's something underneath it. It's it's on the vegetal line. I just I can't think of well it almost it, some dill. Like, yeah, because it's it's probably baked. I, I don't think that they're yeah. think these are made in autoclaves. I'm yeah. not, I'm not sure what the process is. I got no information. But yeah. The the family, it's a partita family, they've been around forever. So I imagine it's yeah, they, they know what they're doing, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. Yeah, I would have to say there's like dill, like fresh dill. And I, I've smelled that before. It's almost, yeah. like, almost like sometimes the dill, if it's overdone a little bit, it's almost like pickle juice. Yeah. A little bit of that. Yeah, this isn't that. This is like the fresh, like the actual fresh dill. It hadn't gone that kind of uh, vinegary, acidic route, but. Yeah, so I'd say, yeah, it's some agave, maybe like a little bit of like pepper or alcohol, just uh, just a small amount. It's, it's, yeah, it's, and I'm really just focusing on that, that vegetal because I hadn't really gotten that in the nose before. I have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This tequila. <laughs> Actually, a few other ones. Uh, um, one in particular that came out of 1414. Uh, it's called El Aguila Real. And it was so over the top. Um, not my favorite, not my most favorite flavor profile coming out of yeah. there. But it was almost like it was almost like jalapeno juice. Okay. Yeah. And it smelled and tasted like an angry tequila. You know, it it didn't, it's not that it had didn't have a bite, but it was on the palate, it was like hot and angry. I just wanted to fight you. Yeah. And yeah. that was the flavor profile he went for. Uh, hmm. again, not my, I'm not a big fan, but yeah. really he's doing well. So this is just nice to nose. It's just, yeah, it's an old to green, a little bit baked. Um, uh, I'm kind of sad that I'm not getting any, any anise. So it's not, it's not because of the dill, but I think the dill is, is taking over and, and, and that's what they were doing. Yeah. Wow, I'm ready to dive in. Yeah. What kind of lakes and tears have we got? Really decent. Oh yeah, here they come. And and they're not super clingy. They're just streaming like Netflix. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Nice. All right, let's dive in, shall we? Nice, sweet on the intake, and then it just mm. pepper explosion. It is. And this is my first first sip of anything today, so it's probably a little little stronger. But yeah, creamy, buttery, that cooked agave, and then yeah, I mean the pepper hits kind of the mid, and then just keeps keeps rising into like a heat, but never offensive. Like it's a fun fun ride. Yeah, it's a it's a nice crescendo, mm. and a medium to long finish. It just Wow. And on the retronasal, I did get just a hint of that anise or that uh, fennel, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, were you getting, did you, did you get more of the, of the, of the dill on the flavor profile or not? Cause I didn't. No, no, it's definitely, um, it's mostly just in the nose. And if I'm getting it at all, it's, it's after the finish, kind of that lingering okay. flavors. I, mean, I took just a small second sip and yeah, that kind of that heat burst. I mean, it's still peppery, you still have that um, kind of, you know, jalapeno to it, but it, it's not as, it's not as big of a uh, impact mm -hmm. that second sip, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Great lip and gum numbness. Mm -hmm. really good wow and that, yeah, like, that that pepper burst just it it lingers like a good salsa it's weird mm -hmm. yeah but right before that on the agave it's like it's that sweet like buttery almost sometimes it it gets as strong as like a uh, like a cream corn i don't know you know so yeah kind of like just just real creamy and buttery um, and then the pepper takes over. Yeah, it's just right at the entry and then boom. Mm -hmm. and just a little bit of the sweetness. <clears throat> this is such a solid tequila. It, and they have not changed. I'll be honest, they have not changed the flavor profile. It's the same yeah. as it was I, when I tasted here nine years ago. That's great. Yeah. Well, and, that probably means they're still using 
mature agaves because if they were making it that way back then, you know. Well, it's a Partita family. They're agave yeah. growers primarily. I mean, the, anybody that has their own property and their own agaves, you know, they they just know how to make it. And, yeah. and, you know, the fact that they have several, just, several brands coming out of there that are just winners, um, yeah. you know, and, and they're just, it's just old school. It really is. And Amatitan is one of my favorite um, areas, regions for their, for the flavor profile, because there is a bit more minerality in, in their tequilas generally. And that's a right. big generalization, but, but yeah. I love tequilas from that, from that region. And that's why I love Regional for so long. Uh, that's no longer available uh, and will probably never be made because it, it had such a great minerality it was I, I think when you talk about Tawar, when mm -hmm. you talk about El Valle that was the tequila that really that really dominated yeah and I, I love yeah I like minerality and tequilas and I, I think that's why I kind of lean toward tequilas coming out of that Amati, uh, Amatitan and then up by Arandas mm -hmm. there's, there's a couple of regions you know Arandas and G4 in that area uh, Jesus, Ma, Jesus Maria I think is what's called mm -hmm. Jesus yep because they have they have a similar flavor profile, but it's a bit a bit more refined. This one's this one's just really great, and it just you know it it grabs you by the shirt collar and tells you here I'm here, you know. Yeah, I feel like in the valley, the minerality you get is accompanied with pepper, and then in the highlands, it's accompanied you know a little more uh, a little more fruity floral, you know. Yeah. and then you get up to a, a totonilco, and it's just all flowers and fruit. It's all yeah. flowers and fruit. But it really there is a, there is a you know, the regions and the microclimates really do make a, a, a difference if they let the agave do what it's supposed to do and grow at a certain, you know, right. age and acquire the, uh, the, the maturity, you know, the, the character, the character it needs and the sugar, obviously the sugar. So, yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it has that, you know, I always just call it like a, like a classic, like an old school, you know, nose and taste, you know, and I think, hey, I haven't obviously been drinking tequila as long as you have, but, you know, to me, I, yeah, it, it's, it's because it's it, classic to me just means like, they're not trying to stand out by doing like, you know, anything different. They're just like, I'm going to make a solid tequila, you know, um, I'm going to make it the right way. And the way it comes out is the way it comes out. And that's what I'm going to give you. And yeah, I definitely get that in this product for sure. See, there you go. Yeah, that's exactly. That's the missing ingredient, folks, that I've been talking about for a long time. There's a, there's a the intention of the maker of the hand of the maker, the the intent with what it's it's coming across. That is the missing ingredient, and the fact that you called it, you know, this guy, this guy, I, you know, he's in law enforcement. There's stuff that he sees that you know. And, and for him to be able to, you know, for you to be able to express that and to know that it's like, it's like you really literally, if you can feel that the intent in the hand of the maker, you get into the, that person's head and heart and you go, oh, I know where he was headed with this. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You know, so I'm right there. I'm brand of promise nominee right here in a in that block. Of, I promise I'll get you a paddle. <laughs> Even, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I might just have it. Um, have envelopes ready when we meet in yeah. uh, in August. So, um, do we have? Like I said, it's uh, up until two weeks ago, I was not able to find this tequila in Texas. But do we have a price point for it at all? I was looking online, and the best I can tell is it's going to be that kind of that forty dollar range. But I've not seen this like the new packaging price. Okay. Um, you know, so I've, I've seen prices anywhere from like 20 to 40, but I'm guessing the 20 is just like old stock that people are. It's old stock with the, and, yeah. and probably when you look it up, it doesn't even have this label. Uh, this was, no, no. I was surprised to see it when it was delivered to me um, because it wasn't what all the other online retailers were showing. It, they were showing the old school label. Um, and I imagine that the pricing is, is probably about right. Anywhere between, you know, 30 to 40, I would say. Yeah. You know, agave prices are up, costs are up. I mean, you know, just the, yeah. what I love is they didn't change the hammered look of the bottle. It's still the same. 
Okay, good. Yeah, I didn't know the old bottles, but I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm digging it. It's, you know, I don't know if it's recycled glass. It has a tint to it, which makes me think it is. Uh, probably. Um, I don't know. Say on here um, that I've seen, but yeah, it also kind of has that, you know, like Fortaleza feel to it. Yeah. You know, no, not that they're trying to copy, but it just. Well, know, they've always of... had it. It's always been like this. I can, I okay. can test to it because I got, yeah. I know I have an empty bottle of it, you know, in storage um just yeah. for posterity but uh it does have a story up here but it's uh, up on the neck but yeah it looks kind of hard to read yeah well it it they taped over it you know it, it kind of tapes over itself and so it doesn't yeah, yeah. make any sense so i'm not even going to read it um i yeah if you folks are have had it and you probably have if you're watching us in southern california let us know what you're paying for it now because the pricing is not the same as it was 10 years ago that's for sure uh, 10 years ago, you know, we didn't have, we didn't have the, the crisis that we're in now. It was probably just beginning to ramp up. Um, I think just before I, I moved to Texas, it was when they had that snowstorm and, and things have been going downhill ever since, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you've had it before, folks, leave us a comment. If you're watching us on YouTube, uh, you know, hit the notification bell, subscribe, you know, unless you're afraid of commitment. And if you are afraid of commitment, then go ahead and commit to, to following Bryce on uh, us and Tequila Connoisseur yep. or follow us on Tequila Aficionado mm -hmm. at, uh, on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, uh, Twitter. We're on Twitter, too. So wherever you do, um, just go ahead and, and, and again, leave a comment. Give us a like. It helps with the algorithm. Whatever you do, folks, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely.